all by himself. I'm telling you, God, you can sit down. God is so good. Hallelujah. You know, when trouble come my way, I just sing this little song. When troubles come my way, I'll just lift my hands up high and say, hallelujah, anyhow. And you know what? They had to fly away. Fly away. God is so good. Let me speak a blessing on you. And Bethel Family Worship Center called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou would bless us indeed. Enlarge our coast, that thy hand might be with us. And thou would keep us from evil, that it may not grieve us. And God granted Bethel Family Worship Center that which we requested. That's you and me. Do you know it? Hallelujah. And number chapter 6, 24 down to 27. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And we put the name of Jesus on the children of Israel, and God will bless Israel. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I, I pray this prayer twice. I pray it at night and in the morning for the church and for us. Almighty God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I invoke your standing order to dispatch angels to protect, propel, and provide your plans and purpose for my life, my family, my friends, my church family, finances, protection, stay the hand of the enemy so that no weapon formed against me or my family, friends, or church will prosper in Jesus' name. I, I pray that. I've been praying that for years for the church and and. Uh, I tell you, God has honored it. I mean, he, he, honor, he honors our prayer. If you got your Bible, say amen. amen. If you hadn't, say, oh, me. I'm telling you, let me read what Jeremiah said about the word. In Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. How many of you eat the word? He said, I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. Think about that. Lift your head up and say, I'm called. If you're saved, you're called. And I'll show you in the word of God. If you're saved, you're called. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah said, thy words were found, and I did eat them. And what did the word do for him? Thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. If, if you want to keep joy, and you want to be happy, and you want to stay happy, read this word and meditate on it, because it's life to you. It's health to you. It's everything you need. So it's the word, say, I eat it. And say it tastes as good. The Bible, David said it tastes like honey. Hallelujah. I get so happy reading it and, and meditating on it. I had a dream last night. I mean, it, it was so real. I mean, uh, uh, I got to share it. Uh, I saw Brother Ron, and uh, he had his hands up, and he was saying, I am the heel of the Lord. And... Uh, I won't never forget that. I mean, it was just as real if he was sitting right there. I guess it's because I've been thinking about him. And, uh, and I, but he said, I am the heel of the Lord. I remember what old Robert said. He said, when you pray for somebody and, and uh, they leave out, he said, they get their perfect healing when they get with Jesus because no sickness can get into heaven. And so when, when you... When you leave here, you leave your sickness behind. Amen. And that, that just blessed me. I mean, he had on the same shirt that I've seen him have on a lot of times. I mean, it was perfect. I mean, just it's awesome how God can, uh, when you're uh, thinking about somebody and uh, uh, meditating on them, how he, can, how he can do that. I'm telling you, he's awesome. But anyway, the just shall live by what? Amen. Say it a little louder. The just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. And without faith, you can't please God. Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says, Without faith, you cannot please God. Say that with me. 
Without faith, you cannot please God. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Let me ask you, are you diligently seeking the Lord? If you are, you will be blessed because he said he would bless you. Diligently seeking. And so in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says we walk by faith and not by our feelings. A lot of people are deceived because they walk by their feelings. If, if you walk by your feelings, you'll be like a yo-yo. Down one day and up one day. Down and up. Down and up. Because we walk by faith and not by what? Our feelings. Hallelujah. If you'll open your heart to God, he'll open heaven to you. That's something to write down and keep. Remember, if you open your heart to God, he'll open heaven to you. Amen. He's so good. He's so good. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, most everybody knows this by heart. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation, creature or creation. Let me ask you something. Are you a new creature? Or, or, are you the same old creature you was before you got saved? If you are, something wrong. Because the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's what? He's a new creation. Old things pass away. Old things pass away. Can you look at your life and tell a difference since you've accepted Jesus? I can. Listen, I can name a hundred things that I don't do no more. I don't lie. I don't cheat. I, I don't gamble. I don't drink. Uh, uh, I don't have a bad attitude. Then that, that was something that really took place in my life. I had a bad attitude, but I'm telling you. And a bad attitude to kill you. Because most people don't want to be around a stinking attitude. Now, I didn't get many in the, amens out of it, but that, you know it's true. If you got a, I used to work with a boy. I'm telling you what's the truth. Man, I told him, I said, look, your kids and your wife hate to see you come home. He said, why? I said, because of your attitude. And, uh, and it's true, a lot of wives would rather see their husbands stay at work or their wife stay at work if they got a bad attitude. A bad attitude will kill you and kill everybody that's around you. Old things, but let me ask you, has your attitude changed? If you change your attitude, God will change your altitude. Amen? Boy, I got awful quiet in here. <laughs> Old things, and, and all things become new. All things, I get a lot of amens out of little kids. All things become new. What new things are in your life since you accepted Jesus? Number one, church, church. Hey, you couldn't get me in church before I got saved. And now you can't keep me out. Uh, that's the difference. I love church. Jesus died for the church. He, uh, uh, he had established the church. You read in his word, he was either on his way to the temple or on the way to the mountain to pray, to pray. Hallelujah. So, so it changed my attitude about the church. It's, now, she ain't bothering me. Uh, they, they, listen, I thank God for little kids that's here because that's the best, best time to get it in them. They can hear. They can hear. And I tell you, the word gets in them when they're little. Amen. When they're little. Hallelujah. So bring them kids. Let them crawl around on the seat. Whatever. Bless God. And let's get the kids in the church. Because that's where they need to be. And, and they get in them. Amen. Amen. All things become new. All things. Look at your life. Check, check yourself out. Has it been a change in your life since you got saved? Uh, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's what? A new creature. Hey, I had people who, after I got saved, that I thought was my friend, tried to get me to drink with them, to gamble with them, and that was, but you know what? 
They couldn't do it because I was born again, washed in the blood. Hallelujah. I didn't go to the honky tonks. I, I didn't quit dancing. I just changed partners. Jesus is my partner. Hallelujah. You can give him a dance and he loves it. He loves it. I talk to my feet. I say, dance for the Lord. Dance for the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. In verse 18, and all things are of God. Well, when you get born again, what? All things are of God. Even you wash your dishes with him. You cook with him. You drive your car with him. Whatever you're doing, you do it with him. With him. And he loves it. He loves it. What's it say in Matthew 6, 33? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Uh, when I got saved, I didn't have many things. I done blowed them. But uh, you know what? I started seeking first the kingdom of God. And before me and Pastor Dorothy started uh, pastoring a church, we had 170 acres. You can ask, uh, three farms. And uh, you know what? After, it didn't mean nothing to me, though. I mean, you know why? Because I couldn't take it to heaven with me. Bless God. So you know what? I sent it on ahead of me. <laughs> and, listen, and that's what you need to meditate on. What have I got waiting for me when I get there? The, the Bible says, Lay treasures up in heaven, not on earth, where people are steal them, because they can't steal them when you lay them up. And when you pray for somebody, you're laying treasures. That young man gave his heart to the Lord this morning was a divine appointment. Yes. Divine. God had him ready. Yes. And when I look at somebody, it's the first thing I think is say, are you going to heaven? You're either going to heaven or hell, one or the others. There's no in between. And, and if you're not born again, Jesus said you're going down and stood up. This one man told his mama, said, I don't believe in hell. He told her, said, go look at them volcanoes. Where you think that fire is coming from? It's, it's coming from down there. Amen. Lord, don't, don't miss don't miss heaven. That, that, Jesus said, I came to seek and save the lost. I came, in, in 1 Timothy 1, 15, I came to seek and save the lost. The lost. That's the most important thing is getting people saved, getting them washed in the blood like the song said. We need to win people to Jesus. Amen. Yeah. That's, that's, that's my first priority when I leave the house. Lord, love somebody through me. Because, you know, our love is no good, but his love is perfect. His love is perfect. And all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry. All right. Say, I'm in the ministry. He's given you a ministry if you're born again. It's, it's reconciling Jesus, the people back to Jesus. Winning the lost. Getting the, the ones that's backslid, the ones that's been hurt in church, get them back in church. When you leave home, you ought to be watching for people that Jesus is going to put in your life to witness to them. He didn't call us to argue. He called us to love. Hallelujah. Love. Love never fails. Say it with me. Love never fails. Hallelujah. You, you're called into the ministry. I love the last song, Brother Gal and y'all son. We've got the power. And a lot of Christians don't know they've got the power. we got the power. Or we've got the authority to use God's word to overcome the devil. Overcome the devil. We've got the authority. Hallelujah. In Acts 1 8, it says, But ye shall receive power, or you shall receive authority by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. That, a lot of people get hung up on tongues. I'm not hung up on tongues. I'm hung up on the power, the authority, 
Now, I speak in tongues. Don't get me wrong. I've got the gift of tongues. I can pray in tongues any time I want to. That's the gift. But then there's a gift for healing and all that. When you come to a a dead-end road, listen, you can start praying in the Spirit, and, and the Spirit knows what you need before you do, and it goes right straight to heaven. The devil will say, oh, you don't know what you're saying. You're saying, yeah, and you don't either. You don't need that. That's what the gift of the Spirit is. It's a gift. If I give you something, you can use it any time you want to. And that's what the gift is. The gift is. I, I love the prophetic, but I don't put confidence in the prophetic. I put it in the Word of God. The Word of God never misses it. <laughs> say that with me. The Word never misses it. You may miss it, but the Word won't miss it. I'm telling you. God is behind his word, and I can show you. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come up on you. Now, what do we receive this power for? To brag about? No. It's for a purpose. We receive power when the Holy Ghost comes up on you, and you shall be witnesses. What's the power for? To be a witness for Jesus. Jesus is not here. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father. And you are his representative down here. You you are the epistle that somebody's going to read, and the way you conduct your life is the way conviction comes to them. Amen? Amen. Your attitude, uh, the things you do, uh, people look at you. And... and, uh, if you don't represent Jesus, they don't want none of it. Amen? We need to live as close to him and for him as we can. I pray, God, help me. Help me, Lord, help me. That's what the power is for. Help me, help me, help me. I think about when they first put the overdrive on the old vehicle. You, you mass on that overdrive and that car, choo, take off. Hey, when we kick over in the Holy Ghost, we take off. Amen. Hey, church, it's joy unspeakable and full of glory, and the half ain't never yet been told. I mean, we're blessed going in and blessed coming out. I'm not talking about things. and that. We're blessed with power and love. We can love people that's unlovable. Let me say that again. We can love people that's unlovable. I've never run into anybody that I thought couldn't be saved. Because when Jesus saved me, he'll save anybody. Amen. I had a boss to tell me. He used to ride with me and ga- where I gambled a lot. And uh, I got saved on New Year's night, and I went to work on me. I mean, I knew I was saved. Bless God. When, when, when Jesus come in, it felt like a covey of birds flew off of me. All my sins, all my guilt was gone. I wasn't guilty. I mean, it, it, it disappeared. And, and uh, this boss, I was walking in with him, and I said, you know, I won't be gambling no more. He said, why? I said, I got saved. And he never said a word. He went on to his department, and I went on and went to work. And the minute I looked up, and he was coming back. And he come up to me, and he said, I'll tell you one thing. If the Lord saved you, he'll save anybody. I won't never forget that. But that's true. That's true. Listen, you, well, you know if God saved you, he'll save anybody. Anybody. He's, he's looking for people that are turned to him. That's what, that's what he went to the cross for. That's what he went to the cross for. He died for you and for me where we could have abundant life. A lot of people don't even know John 10, 10 is in the Bible. It says, the thief cometh not to steal and kill. But Jesus said, I come that you have life and have it more abundantly. Now, I love the old covenant. It's in the Bible, but I'm glad I'm in the new covenant. The new covenant's better than the old covenant. Bless God, you read your Bible. Read, read, read it. We're under a new covenant, a covenant of grace. They was under a covenant. They had to, it had to be right. 
Now we can depend on God. Amen? Amen. We're witnesses unto in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and unto the uttermost. If you can't witness at home, it ain't no need going nowhere else. Amen? If you can't witness where you live, it's no need going nowhere else. Three weeks ago, I was in Mexico. A big church. Uh, pitiful people, poor, pitiful. But the church is full. No heat. No, no heat. No hot water. And I mean, uh, and I mean, the ch church is full. They walked up that old dusty road coming to church, and you talking about praising God. Listen, they lifted the roof. Well, I just sung in the spirit. And when I got up to preach, I asked, I said, did y'all know the Holy Ghost can sing in uh, Spanish? And he can. I didn't know what I said, but the Spirit of God did. And I was rejoicing and just having a good time, a good time. But little, they sung their heart out. I mean, just, uh, just the kids and all, and the kids are just uh, clapping their hands, dancing, and I love that. I love it. I love it. I say, God, give me some of it. Let, let me have it. Hallelujah. It's, it's wonderful to be able to praise God, lift your hands. and work. The first time I lifted my hand, I thought it was two concrete blocks on them. Hey, I, I went to a Baptist church for eight years, and you could hear a pin drop at any time. And then when I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, they got a lot of amens out of me. <laughs> now, I never will forget when I left, I ran into this woman. She said, I don't never hear nobody say amen or praise the Lord now. Church, it's a difference. It's a difference. I left with good terms. After 34 years, they called me to have a revival there. 34 years. Had a good time. Some of you went. We, we had a good time. God, God's all had a Sunday school class. Uh, I was teaching Sunday school and didn't even know how to look up Scripture. The Baptist puts you to work, boy. I, I'm telling you. I, I, was, I was teaching Sunday school. I was driving the bus, and uh, first thing you know, I was a deacon. I mean, listen, I, I'm telling you, they, they put you to work, put you to work. Good people. I mean, I, I learn a lot. I learn how to witness there. I learn how to, uh, I learn all about salvation because I heard it every week. And everything. I never did hear about how to live a victorious life and uh, and that, that's what we need because we're out there where the sinners are. We Listen, the world's dark. And the darker the world gets, the brighter the church is going to get. Amen. Amen. God's going to bless us. He's going to take, he said, if a man being evil knows how to give his kids good gifts, how much more, say that with me, how much more will the heavenly Father give them at act? That's Luke uh, Verse 7, Luke 13, verse 11. It's in there. I read that. I ain't no telling how many times. I said, man, God wants to bless me. He wants to bless you. In Luke 10, 19, we're talking about power. Uh, uh, the last song y'all sung, power, power, power. And I thought, man, that's my message. In Luke 10, 19, it said, behold, I give unto you power. Everybody say power. Power. Say authority. authority. See, that's what you mean. You have authority if you get in God's Word and read it and, and learn how to apply it to your life. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on sorp scorpions, ser serpents and scorpions and, all, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Need to read that other day. You have power. You have authority. Hallelujah. You know, when, when I first got a hold to, uh, that we have authority, I read Kenneth Hagin's book, and, and what you say is what you have and all. And so I started saying, I'm debt free. By faith, I'm debt free. Say that with me. By faith, I'm debt free. And keep saying it. Don't quit. Keep saying it. Me and Pastor Dorothy had that farm up there and just had a bull. Uh, my son gave us a bull and no cow. 
And so my neighbor had, man, he had all kind of cows. And so I just started saying, Lord, I thank you. We got a herd of cows by faith. And, you know, first a little calf come in. Ain't no telling how many calves that calf had that Dorothy raised it on a bottle. And I just kept saying, by faith, we got a herd. When we sold the farm, we had 86 cows, 86. Had an eight-horse lawn mower to mow 120 acres with. <laughs> I mowed around the barn. <laughs> but uh, I, had, I had to believe for a tractor. But it works. When you go to God for something, just start thanking him for it till it manifests. <clears throat> By faith, I'm out of debt. By faith, I've got a truck or whatever you need, put, put by faith in there. By faith. By faith, I'm blessed. By faith, I have health. By faith. It's by faith, by faith, by faith. Learn how to speak it. By faith. By faith. By faith. Hallelujah. It must work because I'm 80, 82, soon going to be 83. By faith, I'm healthy. His strength is my strength. I don't have to run on my strength. I'm running on his. Amen. Hallelujah. I found his word, and it tastes good. Say that with me. I found his word, and it tastes good. <laughs> Say it, joy, unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. Get a hold of this, church. His word, his word, his word. Hallelujah. A new covenant. A new covenant. You got a new covenant, a better covenant. Better, it's a better covenant. Jesus, when he paid the price for a better covenant for us, when he hung on that cross, he didn't just hang on that cross. He hung on it for you and for me where we could have a good life and go to heaven and be blessed for eternity. Amen. Amen. Where did I get to? I give unto you power, power. In Mark chapter 16, 15, 16, 17, and 18, down to 20. Hallelujah. I never heard this preached in the Baptist church. Never heard it preached. There's a, a friend of mine owns a furniture company in Springfield. When I got saved, he was at the first Baptist church. Big, I mean a big church. You, you're talking about a big church. You go to Springfield and ride by. It. And so he asked me to come to training union and give my testimony. And I'd received the baptism of the Holy Ghost then. And so I went and gave my testimony. And so the next week he called me and asked me to come back. And every week he'd bring a different class in there. And uh, the head deacon received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and a couple more. Well, the next time they invited me, the pastor and the song leader was there. And so they were standing in the back. And so, man, I could, the Holy Ghost let me read them just like a book. And so I knew the pastor was going to call me. And so I went home and I was sitting in the chair and the telephone rung. And I said, praise the Lord. And he said, this is pastor so-and-so of the church, and he said, I don't want you to come back. And I said, you don't want me to come back? I mean, the place is full. And uh, he said, uh, and he was a doctor. I mean, you know, they called him Dr. So-and-so. And, -so. and uh, he was a Ph.D., a post hole digger. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I said, why? He said, speaking in tongues is not in the Bible. Uh, he said, the new language means that you won't say no more ugly words. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was ready for him. I had scripture, and I read them. To, and th you know what he said? He said, I didn't know that was in the Bible. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I said, well, th thank you. I said, it's no hard feelings. I said, I love you anyway. And, uh, but I didn't go back. But years later, I heard he received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Years later. And uh, but, but God just told me, he said, you finna get a call, I'll be ready for it. And, and sure enough, he called, he said, 
don't you come back down here. I said, all right. But he lost his deacons and everything, you know, over that. If he, he, he could have really went with it if he had, but he didn't, he didn't believe the Bible. Anyway, in, in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Preach the gospel to every creature. What is the gospel? It, the gospel is the good news. We'll find out. The good news is you don't have to be sick. You don't have to be poor because Jesus paid the price for you. A lot of people are trying to preach the gospel. They don't even know what it is. The gospel is the good news. We'll find out. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, or wherever you're at, and preach the gospel to every creature. Verse 16, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So a person that don't believe, they're already damned. I mean, a person that's not born again, washed in the blood according to the Word of God, they don't go to heaven. That's what he's talking about. They're already down. Damn. So that's why the first thing when I see somebody, I want my first thing thought, are they going to heaven? Are they ready? Jesus made them ready if they just receive him. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be down. In verse 17, and these signs, everybody say signs. And these signs shall follow them that believe. So <coughs> how many believers we got in here? Amen. Well, see, these signs are supposed to be following you and me. Pastor Josh says, drinks warm water. If you got any ailment, that's what he tells me all the time. Drink warm water. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. How do you recognize the devil? It's easy. If it's opposite from God, it's a devil. I mean, that's, that's all you got to do is know what God wants and, and know what the devil is. And the Bible says the thief comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. So anything that kills, steals, or destroys, the enemy's behind it. Amen? He wants to steal your family. He wants to steal your money. He wants to steal your health. And he's a thief. And, and, and he's got a, a, a hook in a lot of people that profess to be Christians, and every time he snatches it, they bow to him. They bow to him because they don't read the Word of God and they don't really know what the Word of God said. They go by what somebody else said. Don't never uh, go by what I say. Go by what the Word said. If, if what I say ain't in the Word, don't believe it. Amen. Bless God. It's the Word. Say, it's the Word. What did Jesus die for? To leave us this Word. Hallelujah. Leave us this Word. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. Well, the first thing you got to do is learn how to cast the devil out of yourself. You don't need nobody to cast the devil out of you. Cast it out of yourself. In the name of Jesus, devil, you keep away from me, away from my family, away from my church family, in Jesus' name. Because I don't have no authority in my name, but in his name I do, and you do too. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and that, that's where the church I was at three weeks ago, that's the teaching they need. They don't know how to uh, use their authority to, to come out of the situation they're in. They're good people, love God. But listen, let me tell you, you, the Bible says fight. In 1 Timothy 6, 12, look at your neighbor and say, you got to fight. You know, when you get born again, get ready to fight. Get ready to fight. 
you've got to fight. Amen? Fight. And it's, it's a spiritual battle. Just put on the whole armor of God where you can stand what? Against the wiles of the devil. But if you ain't got your armor on, I'm telling you, you're a target for him. You're a target for him. A lot of people don't believe in tithing, but that's the only protection you got on your money. Hey, it took me, I was 33 years old before I found out a, a little Baptist preacher sat down. I was in bad shape. Hey, if I walked down one side of the road, a lot of times I'd have to cross over on the other because I didn't want to meet that person coming at me. I owed him something. I don't know whether you've ever been there or not. But you know what? He sat down and showed me from the Word of God, if I'd bring my tithes into the storehouse, God would open the windows of heaven for me. And he'd pull me out a blessing that I wouldn't have room enough to receive. And when you live by the principles of God, you're starting off, but keep with it. Keep with it. Plant and water. Plant and water. Plant and water. There's testimonies in here that people that's retired that's making more money than they was when they worked. Work. And it's all because of tithing, 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 tithing. It's not me. Uh, if you bless somebody, you're going to get blessed, especially if you bless a man of God. You're going to get blessed. But your tithes should come to where you're comfortable with giving them, with giving them. And, and if you can't turn them loose, if you can't turn your money or whatever you're giving somebody loose and you're worried about it or something, you ain't going to get a blessing. You've got to be able to turn it loose and say, Lord, I'm not giving it to them. I'm giving it to you. Amen. Amen. There's a difference. There's a difference. Oh, man, I don't know where I got that at. But anyway... In my name shall they cast out devil. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall speak with new tongues. You don't have to worry about tongues. You just get filled with the Holy Ghost and tongues to take care of itself. Just keep praying and seeking God. Hallelujah. I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost one, one Friday night going to work about 10 o'clock. I had to be at work at 11. And I'd had a Enough hands laid on me, that's why I ain't got much hair, <laughs> to receive the baptism, and I never received it because I didn't understand it. And I, the Bible says, and they were all filled, in Acts 2, 4, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they, everybody say, and they, Amen. began to speak as the Spirit gave them. And what I was doing, I was saying, Lord, I thank you I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm ready to speak. And nothing wouldn't happen. I read this book where if you sit in a chair the right way, because I sit in that chair, they wore it out. <laughs> Never happened. Because it's an act of faith. It said, and they were all filled. And who began to speak? They did. So as you, as you step out on faith and you believe God filled you with the Holy Ghost, and you begin to speak, he'll give you the utterance. And it's so simple. And I was going to work at night. I'll never forget it. And a man had told me to read that scripture. He said, read it till you get it, Acts 2, 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Who was they? That was that 120 in the upper room. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they begin to speak as the Spirit gave the utterance. It's so simple that a natural man can't receive it. Yeah, I mean, God has to give it. And they, and I was going to work, and I was quoting that scripture. Ain't no telling how long I've been quoting it. And all of a sudden, faith goes up in me. And I realized I've been waiting for the Holy Ghost to speak, and he's been waiting for me to speak. And so when I started speaking, 
the Holy Ghost. I prayed all that night. Work, man, I had the best night of work, I'm telling you. And, and when you see it, it's so simple. And when you begin to speak, the Holy Ghost to give you the utterance. And, and man, I'm telling you what. And there's a gift. You read in Corinth, the gift of the Holy Ghost, God will give it to you where you can speak any time. There's a gift in the church. It just comes on certain people. and all. But there's a gift for the individual born-again person of the Holy Spirit to help us out. What your generator do on your car? It keeps the battery built up. The Bible says pray in tongues, sing, sing with the Spirit, sing with the understanding to, to build us up. Hey, that, that's what that keeps me charged up, church, I'm telling you. I have people to ask me all the time, how you stay so happy? I stay prayed up. Amen. Stay prayed up. You can pray and forget everything. Uh, and that's the only way you can forget it, too, because the devil, little, he bombards your mind. Yes, um, he'll shoot at your mind just like a submachine gun. And, and that's why you have to know how to cast down imaginations. Yeah. Cast them imagination down. You ain't going to make it. No, I ain't going to make it, devil. I already got it made. Amen. Don't let him get a word in. You get it back. <laughs> Ooh, I love that. Hallelujah. Uh, see, these signs follow them at who? At believe. At believe. At believe. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Uh, it said something about picking up snakes, but I'll let y'all pick them up. I'm not. I, I shoot them. <laughs> but, but all these promises are for you and for me. They, uh, I mean, you, lay, you a believer? Look at your hands. Say, I'm a believer. I'm, I'm supposed to be laying hands on the sick. That ain't just for church. That's wherever you're at, and you see somebody that's sick, and God leads you, or they'll let you uh, lay hands on them. That's why I pray this prayer. Body, I've seen more miracles praying that prayer right there than anything else. Just speak to their body. Say, body, in the name of Jesus, obey the Bible. The Bible declared by Jesus' stripe, you are healed. And I've seen miracles. I've seen them walk out of the hospital. I've seen just miracle after miracle. When I was in Springfield, they would call me to come to the intensive care when they had people that uh, didn't make it. It was this young man. I won't never forget it. Uh, these two ladies would call me all the time. And uh, he was 17, and he had shot himself with a shotgun. And, it, uh, and his shirt had one inside of him. And listen, he had lost so much weight, they said, he's going to die if he don't live. So I went to see him, and I talked to him a little while, and I said, son, have you ever been saved? He said, no. Anyway, to make a long story short, he accepted the Lord, and, and I prayed that prayer with him, and I left. I went back up there, and he's gone. Years later, I was at the car wash, washing my vehicle, and the boy in the next thing over there just kept looking at me. I mean, man, he was muscle up and all. I said, Lord, if he jumps on me, I'm going to have to have some help. <laughs> and, uh, he, he just kept looking, just kept looking. And uh, so in a minute, he come over and he said, you don't know who I am, do you? I, I said, no, I sure don't. And he said, you come to the hospital and prayed for me, and I, I give my heart to the Lord. He said, I've been to Texas uh, living with my uncle. And he said, I go to church down there. But he said, I just wanted to thank you for coming. I mean, listen. He wasn't big as a broomstick. He lost him. But God will bring you out. I'm telling you. Miracle after me. This one lady, me and Pastor Dorothy was at, at the funeral home. Somebody died and she was there. And I used to work with her husband. Her name was Sue Burney. Uh, and his name was Donald. And I'll never forget it. She had had a stroke. And I've never seen a person in the shape that she was in and still walk. She drug, I mean, and she drug this leg and this, and and, uh, and her body was all twisted up. And so, anyway, Pastor Dorothy was working then, and I was going to meet her at 12 o'clock to go eat, and it was 11. 
And I went to get on my motorcycle, and the Lord is my witness. And God spoke to me and said, go to Donald Bernie's house. Well, I had to go around town, and I thought, man, what am I going out there for? And I went out there, so Donald was fixing to go to town. They had a ramp built for her and pick up his nephew, and he said, if you wait till I get back, I said, well, I ain't got time. I got to meet Dorothy at 12. And so his wife drug out that ramp and was standing outside, and uh, uh, he left, and she said, I want you to pray for me. And so I just lifted my hands up like you would have done and started thanking God for taking her infirmities and bearing her sickness. All of a sudden, she shouted, and she threw that walker down in the wood down there and let the church, God, my witness, I heard her bones start cracking. I mean, just making a racket. She took off running, and I'm standing there, and I, my thinking was, Lord, I know you're going to heal her, but I thought you'd do it tomorrow. <laughs> and so, and she's running up and down and running up and down that ramp and holding on to that ramp just like a little kid, swinging, crying, praising God. And so I told her, I said, Sue, the Lord had visited y'all's house. I said, I'm gone. <laughs> and so I got on my motorcycle, and so Donald pulled back in the drive. It was a pretty good way. And he was in the van, had his cousin. He stuck his window. He said, you gone? I said, Donald, all I can tell you is the Lord has visited your house. <laughs> Sue said he pulled up, and when she walked out on the porch, said he turned white, and he couldn't even get out of the van. I mean, he couldn't even get out. But God, I, that was a miracle. I just seen it, bone popping and all. She went back to the doctor, and she was on disability, and the doctor took her off of disability. He said, I don't know what in the world's happened to you. She said, the Lord heal me. Heal me. Young lady, young lady. But church, you know why? If you'll get out and do what the Word says, look, look what <clears throat> verse uh, 19 and 20 says. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and set on the right hand of God. And verse 20 is the key for me and you. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, and confirming his word. What was he confirming? He wasn't confirming me. He was confirming his word. His word. His word. By his stripes she was healed. And, and, and church, God works with us as we do what? Preach the good news. What is the good news? Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He called me to set the captive free. That's what we do. We set the captive free to preach good tithings. Good. The gospel is good news. Yeah. Hey, that, that, that's why many people don't want none of it. They've heard the bad news. But the gospel is good. Jesus loves you, and he loved me. Do you think a person that loves you wants you sick, wants you broke, wants you beat up? No, Jesus loves us. He paid the price. The Bible says in Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good, healing all that was oppressed of the devil. Oppressed of the devil. Now, when you go out, you don't have to tell them about Bethel Family Worship Center. Tell them about Jesus, and they'll want to know where you go to church. I knocked on, I took it street by street in Springfield after I got saved, and I, all I would do was tell people about Jesus. I, I wanted people, and I still want them to have it so bad. When I see a new person walk in here, my first thought, are they ready for heaven? Are they ready for heaven? When I meet a person at the store or I'm off, are they ready for heaven? Are they ready? We're soul winners. Jesus can't do it without you. Without you. If you're standing on the street corner talking to somebody, 
the only way Jesus can save them is you tell him, tell him about them, about him. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be what? Saved, Saved Romans 10, 13. If I can get them to call, who's going to do the saving? Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. i got a few more minutes. I'll have to preach those. I have this later on. <laughs> I get started getting a message. I don't know when to quit. I mean, God just keep pouring it out. I mean, when you find the word, you find joy. You're driving that old truck down the road listening to the word, happy as you can be. Happy as you can be. Why are we so happy? We eat the word. Eat the word. Eat the word. David said it tastes like honey to my mouth. You get hung on the word, try to overdose on it. That's the best thing in overdose on is the word. And I'm, I'm telling you, I'm overdosed on it. I got to have it. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good, healing all that was oppressed of the devil. Healing all. Doing good. Say, I got to do good, Father. Now you have. You got to do good, Father. In Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19, it's, Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Well, that anointing is on you now. See, that anointing is on you. He has called you and me to do it now. And he backs us up as we walk in the word. Hallelujah. God is good. Such a tammy place. Bless God. If you're here and you just need to pray, I love to see people pray. The altar is open. I'm telling you what. And you know what? The altar is crying out for you and me. Come to Jesus, and he'll give you rest. If, you got, if God had blessed you, come let him know you're thankful. Thankful. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. The altar's open. Pray, 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 church. There's no other way to be happy with Jesus but to pray, pray, pray. Oh, he's so good. He'll break every chain. Every chain. If you're here and you don't know you're saved, oh, please don't leave here without it. I believe, I believe it's that close for us going home. Going home. All you got to do is look at the news. Hallelujah. Just lift your hand, church, and, and worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's El Shaddai. He's the God that's more than enough. He's the all-sufficient one. He'll meet every need you got. Oh, he's good. His name is Jesus. There's no other name under heaven. No other name but the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. God, you're so good. Pray for that young man that got saved. All oh, these young people, they need it. They need it. And they, you know, they need it where they can care to other young people. Hallelujah. You have power. You have authority. And God has called you to use it. Use it. Hallelujah. We need to pray for the city, the leaders here in town. We need to pray for our president. Hallelujah. Oh, you know, the Bible says a house divided cannot stand. And man, the Democrats and the Republicans are divided. 
that really bothers me because I know what the Word of God says. A house divided cannot stand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus, 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 the sweetest name I know. Oh, how I love him so. I was listening to a song this morning. Let us praise God together down on our knees. That's all I remember of it. But boy, that's the best part, ain't it? Let us praise God together. Anybody that is now bow down to God can stand before anybody. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, we praise you. We praise you.